Hello everyone, on today's video uh, we're going to be continuing our series on kind of intermediate topics with the navigation and fuel planning and we're going to be taking a look at climb performance. Now this is interesting because just like we had in the previous video where we were taking a look at takeoff performance, there are different ways to present your climb performance. Uh, the first method of course is you have this handy dandy little chart format. The reason this is great is basically just read it straight out. Notice by the way our friend pressure altitude is back. I was warning everybody about that and I'm also interestingly enough warning everybody about Kias versus Kitas. So you want to be very, very careful with that. Again, this is a Cessna 172N. Now, the interesting thing about these is that we also have the graphical format. This came off a, a Piper 28. Uh, this is basically an Archer. The nice thing about this one is everything is super duper easy to read here, if you can uh, figure out what it says. And then we have a very funky version, which requires a little bit of integration in order to use well. And that's going to be climb performance chart, which is a little different here. Now, some of you are probably saying, whoa, 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 okay. I think you're gonna have to explain this one. Um, yeah, well, that's what we're here for. And again, we're looking for going a little bit deeper into our flight simulator performance. You know, we have to be able to calculate our performance as far as takeoff and our climb and our cruise and all those things before we can even dare to start doing some more advanced navigational concepts. So let's go ahead and get started with the simplest, and that's going to be the time, fuel, and distance to climb chart. Notice this is maximum rate of climb. There are different types of charts for different types of climbs. This particular climb would basically be the full power, and now you're going to hold the nose at the correct angle the entire time. So I'm going to get myself a line, and we're just going to work our way through it. First things first, um, you always add 1.1 gallons for fuel, engine start, taxi, and takeoff. This is a standard amount. You're going to see this quite a bit. Mixture should be leaned above 3,000 feet. Mm -hmm. Increase time, fuel, and distance by 10% for each 10 degrees above standard temperature. Distance is shown based on zero wind. As a matter of fact, you're almost never going to use the actual distances. It's a great way to get an estimate, but it's an absolute garbage way to actually do a careful calculation. So here's how this works. Basically, you find the pressure altitude that you're climbing to. Keep in mind, if you're not starting from zero sea level, it will take less time. So you need to calculate actually two things here. First of all, it's your pressure altitude minus whatever your actual altitude is. So if I'm starting at 1,000 feet, for example, and I'm only climbing up to 4,000 feet, and again, this is all pressure altitude, danger, danger, you will not be necessarily taking as much time or distance as climbing from sea level. So let's assume we're at sea level. We'll make it nice and easy. And we'll assume we're climbing to 5,000 feet. All we have to do now is read right across. So 5,000 feet, it will take us to 5 degrees. Again, this is standard. It will be 71 knots will be our final climb speed. Our final climb rate will be 535. It'll take us eight minutes to get to 5,000 feet. We will use 1.6 gallons of fuel and our total distance will be 10 nautical miles. And that's it. So now you're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if we started at 1,000 feet and we're going up to 5,000 feet? Oh, you had to make it difficult. So now what we have to do is we have to subtract this from our 5,000. So let's see here. 10 minutes minus 2 is going to be 8 minutes. 1.6 minus 0.3 is going to be 1.3 gallons. 8 minutes is going to go down to 7 minutes. But you can see that it's just a slightly different calculation. It's really, really critical that you use the correct temperatures and pressures here. So let's go ahead and uh, create ourselves a little example here and see if you can work it out. Alrighty, so we have a plane that weighs 2250. Uh, we're going to be climbing from 0 to 10,000 feet. The outside air temperature is 25 Celsius. How long, how far, how much fuel? All right, these are pretty good questions. So first things first, uh, we're assuming all pressure altitudes here. We're going to go from 0 to all the way to 10,000, so we're going to be reading from this line. So it's going to, uh, let's see here, it'll take us 21 minutes. It'll take 3.7 gallons. It'll take 27 nautical miles. Uh-oh, but we're 10 degrees above our standard rate. What that means is we have to add 10% onto everything in order to get a more accurate calculation. So our time here, uh, 21 minutes times 1.1 is going to be 23.1 minutes. Ugh, that's a lot longer. 3.7 gallons is going to turn into 4.07 gallons, and 27 nautical miles is going to turn into 29.7 nautical miles. I recommend whenever you do modifications, always go back and double check to make sure you're not starting from sea level, you are starting from sea level. So this is a pretty messy calculation. And you can see that even though it's quick and easy to kind of read it off, this is still pretty hard to use. Now, one thing I'm going to warn you about, and this is going to come up later, is the fact that when when you're calculating your climb speed, it changes as you go higher. 
So at uh, sea level, you basically get 73 knots. At 6,000 feet, you get 70 knots, which is a significant difference in your speed. Again, this is for a Cessna 172. So that's basically going to be using your chart style. Let's take a look at our graph style. Now these are awesome and these are wonderfully simple to use. So basically it's the same procedure as we saw for takeoff distance. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and find the temperature. So notice it has F and C to help us out. Let's assume that it's uh, zero degrees outside. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up myself a nice vertical line. Now notice we have this weird little bend right here. Now you're probably going, what's up with that weird little bend? Well, that bend is there because that represents standard temperature. Again, if it's a 59 degree day and we're going up here like this, you'd stay along that. You're also going to see in their example, they basically bypass that and go vertically directly to their pressure altitude in both of their examples. So uh, we're going to be going vertically. So don't panic when you see that line right there. Okay, so let's assume it's zero degrees outside. We're going to go straight vertical here. And there we have our little temperature line is what I like to call it. Now we're going to go up to the pressure altitude we're climbing to. Remember, if you're not starting at zero feet, you have to subtract however long it takes you from how long it took you to get up to that altitude. So beware of that step. So let's go up to 4,000 feet, keep it nice and simple. So it's going to intersect us right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my line straight across all the way to the right. That's it. That's all you had to do. So now all we have to do is we have to read off our values. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little tiny bit. I'm actually going to switch to black and white so it's a little easier. So we're going to start by taking this intersection, pulling it straight down. And that's going to, whoops, it helps if you actually draw the thing correctly. We're going to start with our first intersection. We're going to pull it straight down. And you can see that it's going to take approximately uh, 0.1 gallons of fuel here. Actually, I'm sorry, about one gallon of fuel. I should be more specific. Now you can come across a little bit further to our next line. This is our timeline. It will take us five minutes to get to that altitude. Our next line is our distance line. So I'll go ahead and grip my distance, pull that one straight down also. And you can see that's going to take us about 7.5 nautical miles to travel that distance. That's actually pretty handy if you take a look at it. And again, this is assuming 76 knots for climb. And it's also assuming 2,500 pounds gross weight. So you can see that this is a very quick and easy chart to make your plan. Because you could say, well, what if I want to climb up to 8,000 feet? Okay. So we just go up to the 8,000 foot line, go straight across here like this. And then you can measure that very quickly too. I go straight down. I can see it's going to take me about two and a half gallons of fuel. Uh, time minutes, I'm going to pull it straight down. It's clearly going to take me 15 minutes. And total distance is going to be 21 nautical miles. Again, this is a fairly accurate, fairly straightforward chart. Again, some people will find this a little bit more tedious because you got to sit here and draw a million lines in order to make it work. So, um... What about this chart? This came from the POH, by the way, of a Diamond 40. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is a little different of a chart here. What this one requires us to do is this one requires us to integrate in order to determine how long it takes us to get anywhere. Uh, that's, that, that's nasty. First of all, you have to assume whatever your climb speed is. Now, according to the POH for the diamond, uh, we're looking at a climb speed that should take us right around uh, 75 knots. So as long as you maintain that, we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to use that as our working uh, place here. And again, wait until you see how tricky this gets. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to assume I'm climbing up to 4,000 feet. Go to my outside air temperature. I'm going to go ahead and pull that straight vertical up to 4,000 feet. We're going to go straight across like this, just like we did on the other one. And now we're going to go ahead and follow the slope until we get to our mass. Again, this is your takeoff mass. Let's assume I'm starting at 2,300 pounds. Go pull that straight like that. Now I'm just going to line up the two here, try to get it as accurate to the nearest slope. And then we go straight across one more time. And you can see now that my final uh, altitude, or my final rate of climb here is going to be uh, 750 feet per minute. Or if we want to go straight across, it's a little less than four meters per second. Now you're sitting there going, well, that wasn't so bad. I, I didn't think that was bad at all. Well, here's the problem. The problem is, is that's what your rate of climb is going to be at that specific altitude. Start to see where this gets nasty, which means on our way up, let's say we go ahead and take our calculation here for 2,000 feet. Again, I'm just demonstrating. Pull that across. We're going to use our same weight here. And pull this one straight across also. You can see that means at 2,000 feet per minute, at 2,000 feet, we were climbing at 900 feet per minute. But... When we got all the way up to 4,000 feet per minute, we were down to 750 feet per minute, which means that as we climb, our vertical speed decreases, which changes the amount of time it takes us to get to the next position. 
So the reason this chart even exists is because this is going to give you the ability to quickly estimate your distances. So for example, if I was going up to 4,000 feet, I know at that weight rate to expect about 750 feet per minute for my climb rate at the least, but I know at the most is probably going to be somewhere around 1,100 feet per minute. If I were to take the average of those two, we'll do 1,100 and uh, minus seven, uh, plus 750, my bad, 1,100 plus 750 divided by 2, it gets us an average of 925 feet per minute. So if I was going to 4,000 feet, that would tell me it would take about 4.32 minutes to do, which is not terrible. And since we're traveling at 75 knots divided by 60 times 75, we would have covered a total of 5 nautical miles. So again, you can kind of see the advantages and disadvantages for the different types of charts here. So at this point, you should be comfortable with calculating takeoff performance, and you should also be comfortable with calculating uh, how long it's going to take you and how far it's going to take you to get up to a certain altitude. Next time, we're going to take a look at how to calculate our fuel during flight as well as our speed. Enjoy.